Alrighty, ah, tough topic this week, right? Family, it's a lot of triggers, but we're right into it. Um, if you want to know my thoughts around gender and identity and how that works, look at insight number three. I really want to hear your thoughts on that because that was such, like it was a real prayer, get an answer moment, and I mean like moment over like the last few weeks I've been praying about how this fits with me and what I put in insight number three is what came to me so I would love you to go watch that one and let me know what you think I really would love your feedback there um but we're going to look at paragraph eight now paragraph eight starts off with we warn and we warners and big letters um and this really spoke to me uh I this is yeah okay so you will be held accountable for how you treat your family especially parents to children um, when this came out in 1995, I had recently come back to church. Not that I was ever, like, inactive, inactive, but I was just sort of like, yeah, go to church, not really interested, you know. Um, just because of the culture, I was never the gospel. I always had a gospel testimony. It doesn't mean that I was living a good life, but I had a gospel testimony. I had a testimony of Jesus Christ, and I didn't stop praying. I continued to pray. However... I didn't want to go to church because of the culture. The culture drove me away, and I know a lot of you feel that. But I decided that I wanted to go back to church, one, because it shows that I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, and I am, and two, to change the culture so that other people could feel more comfortable. And there has been a real shift in that in our area. Um, I don't know of anyone else that would watch this that's been around since 1995 in our area, um, in our ward. Um, but it has really changed. The culture of this area has really changed because it wasn't just me. Um, as I came in and started doing things a little differently, people sort of got on board with me. Other members have. There's still some of the old school and that's, you know, they're there, it's fine. But the newer way of being, um, and then like the teaching like Christ came out and it just a whole lot of cultural change. So I know I wasn't the only one in the movement, um, but to be part of it was pretty cool. But this came out in 1995, this document. And as I said, recently come back to church. And I was elated that finally a hard line was drawn on family abuse because it had been skirted around before. Um, President McKay has quoted many, many times as saying, uh, no other success will compensate for failure in the home. And it's sort of like it took, that's kind of there, but it's not really a hard out, just, you know, don't do it, you suck if you do this. It was just a very, um, you know, they're like more sort of then, they don't really want to talk about abuse in the home. It was just never really talked about, ever. Um, sometimes, but just not really. Um, the bishops had little skills to deal with it. Um, the members were largely just overlooking it. If it happened in their ward, they just kind of turn a blind eye. And that's not okay. Um, was part of why I came back, because to change that culture, because I came from an abusive home. Um, and there's different types of abuse. So, this says, paragraph 8, We warn that individuals who violate covenants of chastity, who abuse spouse or offspring, or who fail to fulfill family responsibilities, will one day stand accountable before God. It is clear in black and white, and I am so glad they put that in there. Very, very clear. Love it. Um... So, too many of us suffered under unrighteous dominion. And those of you out there who are feeling that, you know that. Where the priesthood holder of the home used unrighteous dominion and decided that he was going to rule with his way, not the Lord's way. And he would call it the Lord's way. Oh, the Lord told me to do this. The Lord told me that you needed a hiding right now. And that is not okay. The Lord would never, ever tell that. To a father or a mother to do to their child. No. Um, so those who abuse any type. Because there's what? Neglect. Verbal abuse. Physical abuse. Sexual abuse. Um, there could be like pressure abuse. to Or perfectionism abuse. You didn't get a good enough grade. You, um, you know, you need to do the sport or you need to do this because that's what I did when I was there and you need to do it too because I want you to be like, there's all sorts of different abuse, emotional abuse, there's all sorts of things that can go on. 
and very range of severity. Um, you know, even just like disciplining, it's not okay to hit your kids. And I'm so glad that law change came in New Zealand, and that was a controversial one. I mean, it only just sort of got through. Um, it is illegal to hit your children in New Zealand to discipline them. It is not okay. We have a very bad physical abuse problem in New Zealand, and people just ignore it. When they see it happening, they say nothing. They just pretend they can't see it. I don't. I say something, and boy, do I get yelled at, and I don't care. Because if they're yelling at me, they stop hitting their kid. It's a win, right? I can take it. I've got thick skin. I'm good. But um, whether it's control or neglect or whatever, you're going to be held accountable. God will do what I could not. He will hold my abuser accountable. Make me cry. Because I couldn't do that. And Heavenly Father loves me and he will. And people say to me, do you want to see that happen? And I'm like, no. I don't need to see that happen. Because I know Heavenly Father will pull down the full force of all the garbage and put it at his feet and say, you did all of this. You caused all these problems. You caused all this damage. And you're going to be held accountable. And I don't need to see that because I know and I trust Heavenly Father. I'm going to go hang out with some friends and have a party instead. Um, so be good to your children and family. They are not your possessions. Rather, God gave them to you to look after them. So look after them. Um, they're on loan. Treat them as Christ would. And get help if you need it. If you need help, get it. If you don't know where to go for help, Message me privately, which is easy enough to do if you follow me. And I will find you some help. I will help you find some help. I'm not against all abusers. I just want to get you help. Because if you're doing this behavior, then you need help too. You know, it's got to stop. And I'm just so glad that it was put down here. To be very clearly. And I've had to bring this back up to bishops who I've been talking to. And they've been like, oh no, that kind of thing. And I'm like, no, it's not. Look, it says right here. No, it's not okay. Um, so yeah. All right. Talk long enough there. Um, the quote for this is just from Jacob. Um, it's chapter 2, verse 35. Um, because... When my mother applied for a ceiling cancellation to the stepfather that did this to me, not my current stepdad. My current stepdad is a really wonderful covenant-keeping, temple ordinance-keeping man. He's he's just, and he's so good to my mum, and he's really decent to us kids. Um, we could not be more blessed. But when she applied for her ceiling cancellation, this was a scripture I used, and the family proclamation to back up why she needed a ceiling cancellation from him, um, the stepfather that had abused me. And my siblings, by the way, including the stepkids that came before me. Nobody spoke out until I did, because I'm kind of a stubborn little runt. And uh, I spoke out and I spoke loud. Um, <laughs> cycle breaker. Yeah. Anyway, Jacob 2.35 says, Behold, ye have done greater iniquities than the Lamanites, our brethren, you have broken the hearts of your tender wives and lost the confidence of your children because of your bad examples before them. And the sobbings of their heart ascend to God, up to God against you. And I love that last line. Thank you, Jacob, for telling the Nephites that because they were doing bad stuff. Maybe not as bad as what my stepdad did to me, but still bad stuff. It still hurts you doesn't really matter where it is on the scale. It's going to hurt you. But yeah, the sobbings of their hearts are sent up to God against you. So that even now, if something comes up and it makes me cry because I hurt, it's still ascending up to God against the perpetrator. So think of that. If you're in that situation that's happened to you, every time you cry because of that, it is something that is going to be held accountable. He is going to be held accountable. They are going to be held accountable. So yeah. Get help if you need it. 
Um, but that's my little story on that one. And so I'm really grateful that that came out there. One more to go. I know this is kind of a long week and there's some long videos here, but I have so much to say about this proclamation. So hope I'm not boring you. Hope you're getting something out of it and I'll see you soon for the last one. Okay.